Hey guys, I'm Kano, and this is part 5 of my YouTube tutorial series for 3D modeling. In this video, we are going to be talking about patterns and mirrors. I'm going to be splitting this video up into two sections, which will be patterns and mirrors inside of sketches, and patterns and mirrors outside of sketches. Alright, so let's get into this. So right here, I have a sketch open. And the types of patterns that we're going to talk about are going to be mirrors, rectangular pattern, and circular pattern. To give a basic, and we're going to first start off with mirrors because that's the easiest I can describe to you guys. So a mirror is basically where we take specific objects, like lines, you know, rectangles, circles, so, you know, anything you want. And what you would do is you take that and it flips across a line to create, well, a mirror image of itself. This is super helpful because it can save a lot of time for objects that are symmetrical. And they're also very good for other things like hole placements. So to demonstrate what a mirror does, I'd want you guys to first create a line. It can be horizontal or vertical. Just make sure it is fully constrained, including the endpoints. I just made a hypothetical line that's 15 millimeters, but it can legitimately just be any length you want. So the second thing I want you to do is I want you to get any object, like literally any object. It can be a circle, a rectangle. I'll use a rectangle, or no, I'll just use a circle actually. And I'll just place a center point anywhere and I'll make, and I'll just place a circle anywhere you want. And I want you to constrain it or dimension it any distance you want. And make sure the whole numbers to make things a little bit easier. So I'll make a 30 here. And I'll make it 25. Let me delete that. All right, so now we have a circle that is 25 millimeters down from the top point and 30 millimeters from the right of it. And that's obviously talking the center. So now what I want you to do is I would want you to cr let's click the mirror tool and there are two items in the tab. There is the objects and the mirror line. You can alternate between what is selected you can, or what you want to select. Like if you want to select objects, make sure this is blue. And if you want to select the mirror line, you can select the mirror line. So what these two mean is that the object is what you want to get reflected by. And the mirror line is the line that's going to be what's used for reflection. So the mirror line is not the object that's actually going to happen or get mirrored by, but the object that you select will. So to give a demonstration, make sure the object is the blue, the select tab in the object is blue, and you click the circle or any you know, shape you want. If you have a rectangle, make sure you click all four sides. You can also double click so you can select all sides at once and or sides and the rectangle at once. And the second thing, make sure you go click the mirror line and you click it right here. And as you can see, the circle has been flipped or mirrored uh, with the mirror line being this line. So it's exactly symmetrical from this line. So if you're satisfied with it, just press OK. It's going to take. And now you have two circles. This one is constrained because you use the same dimensions as this, but it's flipped. Now what's a neat fe feature about fusion is that you can change this dimension, you can 15, and these two will change because each of these have the equal constraint. So that is it for the mirrors and sketches. Now we're going to move on to rectangular patterns. So next we're going to get into rectangular patterns. To start off with rectangular patterns, I would first select, or suggest you guys just put any shape at the origin. But the shape I'd highly recommend is would be circles because this would demonstrate the concept a lot easier to you guys. And the second thing I'd want you to do is I would want you to basically go in the create tab and click on circular pattern. And as you can see, there are multiple parts in the little drop in the tab. So objects as stated with the mirror is the objects you'd want to basically go under this pattern. And what a rectangular pattern is, is it is a, a grid-like pattern that basically duplicates an object in that pattern. So what 
you would want to do is you'd first want to select your circle. And now, what you will see is you will see two arrows. This arrow will talk about the number of times we'll duplicate up or down. And this one can talk about going left or right. Now, you can do a combination of both these arrows, so you can do a specific number of instances. Now, if you want to specify specific distances, we're going to have two little, you know, two little sections. This section, specifically the top one, we'll talk about the, the X or left and right. And this one, and this one we'll talk about up or down, or show up and down. Now, the two types of distances you will have are going to be extend and spacing. Extend basically talks about the distance it will want to cover. And within that distance, it will have a specific quantity. So to demonstrate that, let's just say I want to go a distance of 100 millimeters, hypothetically. And within, that and the, within the 100 millimeters, and keep in mind the 100 millimeters between the center of this and the last one, and within the 100 millimeters, I want to have three of these circles. So, and I can also change this quantity. Let's just say I want five and it will fill five circles within 100 millimeters. So that is what extend does. Now spacing does it a little bit differently where it talks about the individual spacing between objects. Let's just say I want to have 30 millimeters between these. Now, as you can see, the, the distances between the centers of these circles are going to be 30 millimeters. I, let's just say I want to change that to 40. And now they're going to be 40 millimeters. Now, and that is really it for the distances. Now, the type of direction you can have is you can have one direction or symmetrical. What symmetrical does is that it does use this, the pattern. It does use the quantity, but it alternates. It kind of flips between two sides to make it a symmetrical pattern. Now, let's just say you want to have three with a distance of 40. And let's just say you want to have an even number, even though it can't properly get reflected, reflected across the center one, like four. What the last one will do is it will go onto the side that is positive. For instance, if the last one, when you already put three, will go onto this side. And it will alternate between here and here and here, you know, so on and so forth. So that is it for rectangular patterns. Now let's move on to circular patterns. Now circular patterns are similar to rectangular patterns where that it will duplicate an object. But instead of having a grid-like pattern as shown with a rectangular pattern, a circular pattern would take the shape of a circle. So to demonstrate that, let's create a center diameter circle that's not on the origin, but make sure you can have the specific size of the circle and specific dimension. As stated with the other two, you can do any dimension you want. You can make, you know, 50 millimeter away, so on and so forth. Just make sure it is fully dimensioned and make sure that you are properly doing that. I'll fix, I'll just fix this to make things a bit easier. So now in order to show what the circular pattern does is you go in the drop down for create and you go circular pattern. You click this. There's two parts of this. There's the objects as stated earlier with the mirrors and rectangular pattern, and there's the center point. And there is another drop down called angular spacing. So the object, the first object I'd want you to suggest is going to be your circle. And the center point, we're going to use the origin because that's the easiest thing you can do. And as you can see, there, and there's a quantity. As you can see, there, these three objects are now around the specific point and equal distance which basically just makes it have a formation of a circle. Now, if you want to increase the quantity to like 10, you can do that. And as you can see, it looks a lot more like a circle. You can even increase it to something absurd, like 50. And as you can see, it'll look, it'll all rotate around that specific point and have an equal distance. Now, this is a very helpful tool when it comes to hole mounting and 3D printing, if you want to do that. And it's also very helpful if you want to just have like a rounder object. Now, when it now when it comes to angular spacing, there are multiple drop downs. 
Full means that all these five objects will cover the full 360 degrees of the circle. If you want to change the angle and make it 180 degrees, these five instances will only go 180 degrees. And the final, and you can also change it to anything like 30 degree or 3 degrees or 30 degrees, maybe 270, so on and so forth. Now the final angle or the final thing we're going to look at is symmetrical. Symmetrical basically has the same um, concept as angle, where you can do a specific angle, but instead of going as this all the way around like 180 degrees, the 270 or 180 or whatever measurement you have is going to be around the point, and this is going to be the center of that angle. So if I do 180 in this case, what you can see is that the 180, instead of going from here all the way to here, it will go from here to here and have this the center. So that is it for circular patterns and patterns and sketches. We're now looking to look at these three features, but outside of sketches. So right now we're outside of the sketch. And what I first created is I've created just a box with a hole in it. As the earlier with the other examples, you can just use any object you create or want. I would recommend for you to ha make sure it has a hole in it because we're going to demonstrate some other concepts that will be, or other parts of it, that will be very visually helpful for you guys if you just have the hole. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a mirror. Now there are multiple parts in mirror. There's faces, bodies, friction, and components. Uh, we're going to first talk about the bodies because I've create we've created a body and the object and the two parts in this are going to be objects and mirror planes the object is just generally going to be the object you're going to use and the mirror and instead of having a mirror line the mirror tool outside of sketches has a mirror plane now this can be the xy you know yz xz plane just any plane you've created so what we're going to do to demonstrate this is we're going to first select the object for the body and the mirror plane, we're going to select any of these three planes. It can be this plane, it can be this plane, or the one here. I'll use this plane because it's easier to represent. So, and now what we're going to have is we're going to have a drop down. This is going to be two different parts of this. It'll be a new body and a joint. The new body means that this part here is going to be a just new body. And in the drop down on the left, it's going to show as body 2. But if we do join, what it will do is it will actually just merge with this body. That's what, is what join does. And it will create one, and it will just create, it will just make sure body 1 will just have an added part with it. So to demonstrate both of them, I'll just do it right now. So new body, press OK. And this is what it looks like. They're now going to be two bodies. Now if we go back to mirror. And we click the plane and press join. As you can see, that one part has now basically been mirrored and now they're merged into one component. Oh, basically just see a bigger block with just two holes. So that is the main premise of a mirror outside of outside of sketches. Now let's move on to rectangular pattern. Now rectangular patterns are mostly similar, but because to mirrors where they have faces, bodies, features, components. Uh, we're going to use bodies and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to specify directions but in a different way. So at first select an object and now the next thing we're going to have to select is directions. So the direction would mainly just talk about the plane or the way you're going to do it. So if I talk about this direction, it is specifically going to go like here and out. And if I do this direction, and if I combine two, it will talk about the two axes it will use. So basically, just select the, ax the axes that you want to use. So if you want to use this axis and this axis to... Oh, I can't select it, my bad. If I select this axis, this, a this axis and let's just say I want to select the, the other axis, you can do that, as stated earlier. So now to demonstrate that concept, we're going to go to rectangular pattern. We're going to go to bodies, use this, 
use the two directions this and this and now we're going to specify the same type of distances you would do in inside sketches I said 50 50 and note something note this that you can only go as a 2d grid and you can't go like a full 3d grid you the only way you can do that is if you do two rectangular patterns let me and you can also do the same thing with extend and spacing so I'm just gonna change this to 50 and 50 and make this 50 and now as you could see let me make, I make them 100 as you can see we're gonna now have a grid of all of these parts and once we press OK they're all gonna become new bodies now what is an even cooler feature about Fusion 360 and our CAD software in general is we can specify holes to duplicate them by doing faces so to talk about this we'll do this and we'll do the directions but in this case we're going to use this direction this direction and what you can do is you can specify a distance of the hole I'm going to do this I'll make it 2 by 2 and as you can see it's going to show like this and once you press enter OK the hole is now duplicated inside of that pattern so that is a very cool feature that you can use in Fusion 360 or in CAD software in general. Now the final thing that we are going to be doing is we're going to do a circular pattern. Now a circular pattern will require an axis instead of a point in this case. So we're going to do the same thing with bodies. We're going to select this and we're going to select the axis that we want to do it in. So we're going to select this axis and as you can see all of these are now rotated around here and and it can only go a specific quantity and the drop downs are going to be the same where you can have 180 90 and you can also have a symmetrical one that's 90 it's going to be the same scenario as the one before except it uses bodies and once you press ok you're going to have three different bodies like this now note that this is not very um, indicative of a good circular pattern because the objects collide. But this is just a way that will demonstrate how these features will work. Now that is it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be start off. We're going to start off by doing a couple of construction tools right up here. And what we're also going to do is we're going to be talking about sweeps, which is another very helpful tool. Alright, see you guys.